Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness of the Monty. Fished the West Walker River yesterday for Wilderness of the Monty Patreon and slept in my car and now I'm at the Levitt Meadows Trailhead. And I'm going to be hiking up to Poor Lake. Not poor like you're pouring or poor like you don't have any money, but poor as in P-O-O-R-E. So it's probably named after some dude or some lady named Poor. I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, I think it's about a three mile hike. There's supposed to be some decent brook trout fishing up there. I just still have the jig from yesterday on my on my pole. And I'm just gonna carry my pole today. As usual, when I sleep in my car, I never sleep good, but it doesn't matter. Once I got my pack on, it's cold, I'm ready to go. It's gonna get really warm today, so it's 6 a.m. now and I'm gonna start hiking, so. Let's uh, let's hit the trail and let's see what this hike has in store for us. So there's the trailhead parking, and then you need to walk down a trail and through the campground, which is right over here. And then you cross the river and that's where their trail really starts. This is the West Walker River. Things flowing good, man. And there's the old bridge that's crossing the river that's falling apart and I would never want to walk on because if you fall in there, you're probably going to die. Fortunately, there's this nice new bridge and that's the one we're going to be taking. I talked to two groups of people hiking out of this trail yesterday that came into the trailhead when I was cooking dinner. <laughs> Everybody told me the same thing. The mosquitoes are horrible. So I am bathed in 100% deep. My liver is screaming, but I won't get bit. And I keep a, a clean little piece of toilet paper in my pocket so that when I sweat and it goes in my eyes and I'm blinded by it, I can wipe it out with that clean toilet paper and I can see again. You see, seeing is a good thing when you're hiking on a trail. Immediately charging uphill. This trail gets a lot of pressure. I think most people hike a little farther and I think you link up with the Pacific Crest Trail on this. But with a with my lighter day pack and this cold air in the morning, I can just pretty much power full speed in there, man. And I should be able to reach the lakes pretty quick. I'd say no more than 20 minutes a mile. I don't think there's much elevation gain on this hike because I'm starting at almost 7,000 feet, I think. I don't think these lakes are much more than that. I think they're like 7,500 or something. I don't know. As usual, my research was a little sketchy and short. So, and I don't got my cousin Lance here who has all kinds of facts. So, I'm gonna say I can show you the hike. But if you want a lot of really tight details, go to all trails or something. <laughs> so here's a sketchy sign. It says Secret Lake West Walker Trail with an arrow that's scratched into it pointing up that way. So, okay. I think we'll take a look at that. I'm getting a little bit of elevation, but it ain't much. And the trail's really big, easy to follow. So, I'm just going full speed. Full speed ahead. Kick it up a notch. Whatever you say to say you gotta go faster. This is a cool shot. Got the river down below. The big peak out in the distance. I ain't hiking there, that's for sure. So this sign looks slightly more official. 
I could have made this in wood shop in high school, but <laughs> this is like the quality of something I could make. <laughs> like the fancier signs, I don't think I think that's above my skill. I don't know what my elevation game speculation was, <laughs> but, <laughs> but short term, there's some elevation gain. I might be giving it back, but definitely going uphill. I've been powering uphill for a minute now. I don't know what the net elevation gain is going to be, but definitely going to be crossing some ridges. <laughs> this is cool. It's not hot yet. Pack is a giant. I'm cruising. There's a pack station down on the river. Seeing a lot of hoof prints and some fresh horse crap. So it looks like they're bringing groups into the backcountry. As far as exposure goes, if you get like a noon start on this trail, there's nowhere to hide from the sun. It's brutal. It's that kind of desert mountain interface where there's a lot of desert scrub and stuff as opposed to more of your manzanita and pine trees. So, get an early start or a late start. Some kind of start that doesn't entail the prime heat of the day. I'm sure erosion has something to do with it, but man, that's a lot of hiking to make a trench like this. <laughs> hiking, horses, all kinds of things passing through. I was hoping this was just going to be up and down, but there's a measurable amount of uphill. Like, we might drop back down or something, but just be prepared. There's going to be some uphill. <laughs> and so far, it's been mostly uphill. And it's flattened up for a moment. I'll take a rest and show you there's that big peak that was just poking up. I've gone so high, you can now see all of its companion mountains <laughs> and the trees are getting a little thicker so we're getting up here and there's the West Walker River winding through that meadow there'll probably be a better shot than this but if I don't get this shot and I think there'll be a better shot of this then I'll get up the trail and there'll be no shot and nothing will be shown so there was a better view of the West Walker River in the meadow from above. That's cool down there, man. That's a lot of water. I wonder what the fishing's like there. I know it's pretty good in pickle metal. You gotta work for it, but out here it looks like you gotta work for it too. It looks like there's some real easy walking and casting everywhere once you get up there. I think I'm gonna have to hike out there and see what's up. For the most part, this trail's relatively smooth. It's just like a thin sand trail. Not sand sand, but you know what I mean. That gravel, sand, dirt mixture, dust. So it's pretty easy to power through it. There's a couple rocky sections, but not that many. Scratch that nice dirt I was walking on. Now I'm walking on rocks, but it's not that bad. It's small rocks. Anything bigger starts to wear on your legs, man. When I look at distances like this, I always factor in, like if I want to reach that over there, those, that mountain area, how much effort would it take to battle through all of those trees, canyons, I mean, I'd see you in hours trying to get that far. Traveling, <laughs> traveling in the mountains ain't no picnic. I think I see Kerman Lake way off in the distance. It's either Kerman or Junction. But that is far. <laughs> We're not going to Kerman Lake, thank goodness. As suspected, finally I'm going downhill again. Because it just seemed like you just can't go up forever. Unless the lake is at like 9,000 feet. Again, we started seven, so. 
Now, I'm giving it all back. Having big trails is frowned upon in wilderness areas and stuff. Like when they get really wide and they expand. I'm kind of in the middle on that. For me, I like a trail that's really easy to follow, easy to walk on. I don't always have to have bushes scraping my legs and, and, and climbing over a skinny boulder trench. Because once you walk off the trail, it's wild. <laughs> so, I mean, there might as well be a clear path where people aren't getting confused and making more side trails. And that's just the way I see it. Now, sometimes when you get to trailheads that are really busy, the trail's like... 15 feet wide. That's obviously too much. This right here is kind of like the middle bowl of porridge for me. It's just right. And I'm seeing a big long lake down there, so that's probably poor lake. But I'm not really close to it yet. <laughs> that's a minimum. <laughs> a mile, mile and a half away. I'm way above it. I may not have gone the right way because there's a lake down there. I know I got to keep that lake on the right side of me. I already hiked down there. That was a disaster. But there's a trail right here that breaks off. And Poor lake is right down there. So, that's where I need to go. That's where I'm going. Here's a little scab of a pond if you need one. <laughs> it's actually really cool looking, but that looks like an absolute mosquito love fest going on out there. I can see risers from way up here. So hopefully they're big risers. Not big, I think we're dealing with brookies, but I can see an outlet stream, way, an inlet way over there. So I have to do some exploring. But first I gotta finish getting there. I think at some point I took a wrong turn <laughs> because I think I've been to Roosevelt Lake. <laughs> so I've just been like kind of going with a compass. <laughs> And uh, just kind of knowing where the lake was. There's just swarms of little brook trout. That's the next generation right there. Or a lot of food <laughs> for the bigger brook trout. And it's a big lake. It's a big one. And it looks good. That's gonna wrap up my hike to Poor Lake Wilderness with Amani style. I got you to where you can see the lake from the main trail. And I think I took the trail to Roosevelt Lake or something. And I'm not 100% sure a main trail even comes to this lake. But you can see it and then you can make your way down cross country. That's what I did. But you got the general sense of the hike. It's about three miles. If you don't take the wrong turns, I did. And there's a lot of up, a lot of down. So going in, going out, you're getting it in both directions. <laughs> so before you head out here, look at your all trails, do all of that. That will be good. I'm just looking at little tiny trout swimming around. And if there's little tiny trout, there's bigger trout. So I gotta get my gear ready and I gotta start hiking around. I'm gonna hike uh, like the mile or so to the back inlet and see what's going on back there. So we can get some fishing in. But for now, that concludes my sketchy hiking directions. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on Wilderness with Amani. Until next time.